Hi everyone! Today I will be coloring a page from Coloring Haven magazine by Meredith Dillman, but you can find the same picture in Meredith's book Foxes and Fairies. I wanted to do quite bright and colorful background for this page. Usually, if I decide to use very active color for the background or very dark, like here I decided to use carmine as a main color, I prefer to start from coloring background. If I already would color the fairy figure or portrait, so the main object on the picture, and after that I would do a bright background and something goes wrong, it would be more disappointing. So I usually start from the more difficult part, from the background. And another reason is that if I do background first, it will help me in the second step to decide better values for the main figure, to decide do I want her to be lighter or darker, so comparing to the colors of the background, it's easier to select the right value of colors. You know that paper in Coloring Haven magazine is of medium quality and it's possible to use water-based mediums and also pictures are one-sided, so I select Neocolor crayons as my basic medium. I decided against using, using watercolors because I want more opaque background and you know that neocolors provide more opaque color than regular watercolors. And I plan to show you how I get the better result with my neocolor backgrounds. Because I got some questions from you that your nail color backgrounds looks not very even with some white areas with visible brush strokes and you know that I have the same problem because paper in the coloring book isn't bad but it's also not of watercolor quality. So, it's not usually easy to apply just one layer of neocolors and to get nice, even, smooth background and with the density of colors which you planned. Here I applied carmine as a main color and I selected two areas around butterflies and closer to the knees of the fairy where I plan to do a slightly lighter areas and on the whole other background I applied carmine with pretty thick layer to get a quite intense carmine color. For the area closer to the trees I selected dark indigo. First I wanted to use aubergine but I was afraid that it's not quite dark from my plant background and as dark indigo in neocolor set is, has distinct violet tint into it, I decided that it will be a nice color and that it will be possible to use to mix it with carmine. And to add some additional color accents, I decided to use a little bit of purple just for a couple of spots. After I applied initial layer of neocolor crayons, I start to apply water. I use my Jackson's Art Quill brush. It's not very hard, so it doesn't damage the surface of the paper, but it's also not very soft, so I am able to control water flow and I am able to color even the smallest area with its small tip. This brush is able to hold quite a big amount of water, but here for nail colors I try to use a very moderate amount of water, so I usually keep a paper towel to wipe away excessive amount of water and I also try 
to dip only the tip of the brush in the water. As I said, I applied quite a thick layer of pigment, so my color is intense, but the backside of this is that when I start to apply water and pigment starts to dissolve, I could get a white lighter stains on the color of the background. So I try not to move pigment. I work in a very small circular movements, only to drop water and just a little bit to make some small strokes with my brush. With special care, I work on the areas where I have both carmine and dark indigo pigments. I don't want the one color to absorb another, so again I try to move pigment as little as possible. Just touch of the tip of the brush for a little bit of mixing. After I applied water and activated nail colors, I let my picture to dry completely. Usually it's quite quick because here we have a very hot summer weather. And then I prefer to iron my page. But remember that you can't iron picture while it's still wet, so let it dry. And you can see that apart from the light areas which I planned to do around butterflies, I also got not very even and opaque background, so some visible stains, which I am not very happy about. But it's because of the paper quality. And I know what to do in such ca cases, I am prepared to correct it. Sometimes I find it helpful to apply second layer of crayon. So I just take carmine and apply second layer in the areas where I am not very happy with the intensity of colors. But it's not my favorite method, especially on the paper of medium quality. Because again, you have to be very careful when you apply water to this second layer. It's not very quick, so I think that second method is more universal. Here I used second layer of crayons only on the areas where I want more intense colors. And for the areas with stains I will use the second method. And it's very easy. I just take all my pencil swatches and I select regular pencils which are very close in colors to the colors of my neocolor crayons. Usually I prefer slightly harder pencils, so I very rarely use Prismacolors for such purpose. Here, for example, I selected Derwent Color Soft Red and Polychromos Permanent Carmine, and they are both very close to the color of the neocolor carmine. Then I selected Derwent Color Soft Purple to cover areas which I made with dark indigo crayon and also additionally I selected a white and pale lavender for those light areas around butterflies which I plan to do. So I just start to apply layer of pencils on top of neocolors and Somehow Neocolors created a great underpaint. On top of it, it's possible to layer pencil pigment without any visible strokes very smoothly and together they create nice opaque background. You could ask why to combine both mediums. Because you can color the whole background using these colors of pencils. But here the question is in the paper quality. If I would color in Japanese edition of Manuel de Bonheur, for example, I could apply pencil without visible strokes due to the tools of the paper paper quality. And on this paper, which isn't bad, 
it's quite nice but still it's not of the best quality so for me it's not very easy to cover the whole background with pencils it will take me um, longer time to finish it and it also won't be very easy to cover everything without visible strokes so for me it's easy to combine both mediums Even budget pencils start to look better on top of new color underpaint. And I also can be very quick in coloring and not very careful with my pencil strokes. And sometimes I even smooth pencil pigment with my fingertips. I wanted to mention once more that for this purpose I prefer to use slightly harder pencils. Prisma colors are not very helpful. Also, I love to apply second layer of pigments in the areas where we have this border between light and dark areas. And with pencils I can smooth and to make more smooth color gradient. So with pale lavender and white I cover this area where I applied thick layer of carmine and thin layer of carmine. I think that I will be working on this area after I will finish my fairy. I plan to add some pearlescent watercolors for this area, but so far I am quite happy with my color gradient. After using pencils on top of neo colors, I am much more happy with my background. I think that it looks more even and also more opaque. After that I started to work on the tree and I wanted to make a black leaves with very thin golden edge. So I decided to combine green gold from polychroma set and with any black pencils. But I wasn't sure that I will be able to mix black and green gold together in order to make a clear mix without any dirt. So I decided to use additional colors like mediums and I selected black cherry and black grape from Prisma color set. I use them in a random order without being very careful just to make leaves to look not completely black and I don't want this tree to be very detailed. I want it to look like a part of the background and not distract attention from the fairy. For the tree trunk I selected first Prismacolor sepia and black because I didn't want to color very detailed tree bark, I just wanted a dark tree. But then I decided that I can switch to budget Faber-Castell Echo pencils, so I selected a couple of shades of brown and black. Also, I left uncolored very thin edge of the tree trunk on the left part, closer to the fairy's body and her hand. It's because I'm not sure about her wings. If I decide to make them glowing, then on the tree trunk I will do a reflection of colors from her glowing wings. So I will decide about this part later. I speeded up this video because I thought that it would be quite boring to watch in real time how I use neo colors, how I apply water and how I color such a big background with pencils and I had to apply at least two or even three layers of pencils in order to cover all white spots with dark colors. So I speeded it up. And it took me quite a long time to finish this background because picture is big, it's A4, but in the end 
when I am happy with the darkness of colors, with the intensity of colors. Now I am ready to enjoy my next step and to color fairy. I highly recommend you to try using pencils on top of neo color, especially when you work on medium quality of the paper, and I hope that it will help you to get a more opaque, smooth and intense background.